What's up everybody, this is Teacher Ivan from Next Gen Academy. Our goal in this channel is to help you achieve your highest potential and to help you understand subjects in the easiest and the most efficient way. If you'd like to get more tips and tricks on how to achieve A star in your IGCSE, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to this channel. Lastly, if you need any help in your studies, you can always head on to our website, link in the below or our Instagram Drop us a DM and we'll be able to help you. Enjoy this video and I wish you all the best. Okay, welcome back. This is part two of sets and Venn diagram. Okay, the very first thing that we'll be learning today is called further set language. So yesterday we learned quite a number of symbols, right? From your union to your intersect to sets. Um, to complement, uh, member of. So you all need to recognize all these symbols. Uh. Just a recap also, mathematics is a, like the whatever that we that we learned yesterday, it's like learning a new language. Okay, for those of you who learn or who like K-pop, like your BTS and your Blackpink and all, you all want to learn what are they singing about. Okay, or you all like your K-drama. Or anime also, right? Uh, you all will go learn the, the, the Japanese words and all. So same like mathematics also. Mathematics, in a way, why we learn mathematics is so that we can solve problems. Okay? There are a lot, a lot of problems in, in this life to be solved. And how you actually be successful is when you are able to solve problems of the world. Okay, so we're going to learn a few more um, language of uh, sets. Okay, the first one uh, that we'll be learning is called subset. Okay, subset. Okay, what is subset? Uh? I'll give you an example. If A, okay, we say uh, if A, that means a set A has 1, 3, and 5 as its element, and B also got the same exact set. Okay, 1, 3 and 5. So the elements is exactly the same. Then A is a subset of B. Okay, the definition of the subset right is that all your elements in this particular set is the same as that element of another set. Okay, subset. How do we write the symbol? How do we write the symbol? A, then we put a C like that, and then B. C with an underline. Teacher. Yes? Are we allowed to write another way around like B, then C, then A? I uh, can. Can. Okay, good question. Alright. Uh, you can write B is a subset of A also. Okay? Yep. That's a good uh, pointer. Okay, so if we want to write not a subset, we write it like this, okay? If it's not a subset, uh, we write it as C is not a subset of D, okay? Not in set notation, normally you just slash the symbol, right? Then it's, it, it just means it's not, it's not that particular whatever that you want to express. Okay, uh, so we learn the word subset. Uh. Okay, how I I remember also if we say subset, uh, that means all of it. The criteria is all the elements have to be the elements of the other. Okay, but there's another there's another one is called proper subset. Okay, proper subset. This is the second one. Proper subset, right? It just means some of it is the element of the other set. Okay, so back to just now what uh, Sebastian said, right? Is uh, A is a subset of B, B is a subset of A. Okay, we this time we can interchange. However, proper subset, you have to see. Okay, let's say uh, an example. If A is equals to 3, 5, okay, if A is equal to 3, 5, and B 
is equals to 1, 3, 5. Okay, then what we can say, because you see, right, in B, there's 1, 3, 5. In A, it's part of B. Right? It's part of B. So we can say that then A is a proper subset of B. Okay? The symbol for it is A, then like a C shape without the underline, B. Proper subset. Okay, so don't get confused between subset and proper subset. Huh? Subset is all the elements is part of the other set. This one, proper subset, part, or you can remember as sum. Sum of the elements or part of the elements in one set is the elements of another set. Okay, so in this case, we can say if uh, A is a proper subset of B, but can we say that B is a proper subset of A? Think about it. Huh? Can we say B is a proper subset of A? Cannot, right? Uh, because B has 1, 3, and 5. Okay, 1, 3, and 5. There's no 1 in A. Okay, so we cannot put it the other way around. Okay, so if we want to say not a proper subset, not a proper subset, okay, you just remember, like if you don't like something, you just slash it off, right? Okay, you want to cancel it off. Uh, so let's say if you want to write C is not a proper subset of D, we write the symbol as the, the subset symbol, then we slash it. Okay, so this first one, we learn subset. Second one, we learn proper subset. Okay, following so far? Mm. How is it not a proper subset? How to know? Not a proper subset, meaning, meaning none of the elements is part. Are the same. Uh, none of the elements are the same, yes. Okay. Uh, so let's say I say C here uh, is 1, 2, 3. But D, the elements in D is 4, 5, 6. There's nothing related to it. Uh, okay. uh, so it's not a subset. Okay, so that's one of the examples. Okay, let's look at the third one. Okay, if, if we write an expression like this, A equals to, then we curly bracket, x dot dot, x is a multiple of 4. Okay. How I see this, right? The dot dot, uh, imagine it's like when you all write your English at time, when you dot dot that time, then you do your, okay, my, my English is, is quite bad, so I don't know what, what the symbols call already. You dot dot that time, it's like when you are speaking, right? Uh, when, you, when you all write your essay and all, okay, it's like, let's say, uh, Christine says, says, then we put dot dot, right? That, uh, Mathematics is very fun, <laughs> okay? This is just an example. Huh? Okay, so the language on how we read this, x dot dot, x is a multiple of 4. We say x is, sorry, a is the set of numbers x such that x is a multiple of four. Okay, you don't have to worry so much about proper English in mathematics. You just need to make sense of what it is. Okay, you see uh, how I read it? Uh? A, so set A has what? Okay, we define what is set A. So when we define set A as X is your element, so inside the curly bracket, you always express it as elements, right? This is what we learned yesterday. So what exactly is X? Okay, now the question is, what is X? Okay, X is a multiple of four. Okay, so now how do we express this, uh, this one in, in terms of the elements? 
So we can say that A is equals to, so what's multiples of 4? Okay, then you all need to know lah what, what exactly is multiple of 4. So multiple of 4 means your 4 times table. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, so and so forth. But they never say where it ends. Okay, so we just assume that it goes on and on lah to, we call it to, to infinity. Okay, so we learn uh, three things, subset, proper subset, and uh, how we express it in uh, a different way on how we express the, the elements. Okay, now let's look into the example. Teacher. Yes. I don't really get number three. Okay, which part you don't get? Uh... The uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Okay, we are doing this example here. X is a multiple of 4. What, what do you understand by a multiple of 4? Like you say the 4 times table. Ah, yellow? But so when you need, you need to end? Why you need to end? Uh, when, like, right yeah. until... We when? don't end. Here, here there's, no, there's no condition for you to end. So that's why I write dot, 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 mark. Okay. Uh, it goes on and on and on. Uh, sometimes they will give you conditions. Okay, maybe they say x is a multiple of 4 and your last number is maybe uh, 40. Uh, so you write oh, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. Then we stop there. Mm -hmm. But in this case, they don't give you a condition. So can be anything. Uh, uh, can be really can, can be anything inside. So you just need to read the conditions. Now the main thing is you understand how they express it. They say x dot dot x is what? Okay? Okay. Cool? Okay. Next one, huh? Listing sets and illustrating on a Venn diagram. Okay, so this is your next part here. Okay, so these are a few of the things uh, they give you the, the sets. So yesterday we learned this symbol. It's called universal set. So let's say if my universal set is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, A is equals to 2, 4, 6, 8. Who do we appreciate? Okay, that uh, B equals to 1, 4, 9. C equals to 1, 2, 5, 7. Okay. This one, uh, it's how they define the sets. Uh. Why is it like this? I also don't know. Okay, they just define it. A is 2, 4, 6, 8. B is equals 1, 4, 9. C is 1, 2, 5, 7. And your entire universe... Okay, remember the word universal set, your entire whatever problems that you're solving is 1 to 10. The value is 1 to 10. What does it signify? We don't know. It's just numbers. Okay, so elements is your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so we now look into the question. What is, they say, least A prime? A prime means what? Yesterday we learned this symbol. Okay, you all go back to, to the first thing, uh, no, sorry, not the first thing, in the Venn diagram one. This is called a complement. Okay, the complement of A. So sometimes like, you'll see I use the language A prime. Uh, so if, if you all might be blur, like why I say A prime, the apostrophe in uh, mathematics or your ad math or so, uh, normally we can say as A prime rather than complement because complement is like very long to say, right? So I will say it as A prime. Okay, so A prime means not A, right? What is not A? Okay, that is not in A. So how do we write it? A prime, we know that A is 2, 4, 6, 8. So, and we know our entire universe is 1 to 10. So you write down all the numbers that are not 2, 4, 6, 8. So it will be actually all your odd number, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay, so you all need to understand what the symbol means. It's actually very simple and you just need to know what are they asking you for. 
Okay, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Second one, what's this symbol? Okay, so this is uh, basically, you need to link the knowledge from yesterday. Uh. List B, what's this set face? Intersect. Okay, intersect. So you all need to remember this symbol is called intersect. So what, what are the elements that are in B and in C? Okay, they are common in B and C. So now you all look into set B and set C. In set B, I have 1, 4, 9. Set C, I have 1, 2, 5, 7. Okay, so what are both, what, which element is in both of it? It doesn't have to be 1. Nah. It, that, sometimes it might be none also. Okay, so if you all look here, there's only one common term, which is 1. Okay, so how do we write it? B intersect C is equals to curly bracket 1. Okay, third one. Okay, I'll go a bit faster because I, I want to finish it by the end of this class. A intersect B intersect C. Okay, so what are all the elements that are in A, B, and C? Are there any common elements or not? So you all look, oh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 4, 9, 1, 2, 5, 7. Okay, so you all look into it. There are actually no elements that are common between all three of it. That means it needs to appear in all A, set A, set B, and set C. Okay, so there's no such thing. So we put it as an empty set. This is a symbol of the empty set, or we can write it just a empty curly bracket. Either one of these can be will, will be the answer. Okay, you don't have to write both of it, huh? you just write one of it. Whichever you you feel like like you like uh, to, to draw. Okay, third one. List A prime, okay, or complement of A, union B. So what is what are the elements that are in A prime or B or both of it? Okay, that means all of A prime and all of B we put together. That's what union is. So number one, we have to list law. What exactly is A prime? So just now in the first question, um, eh, sorry, uh, the first one, I missed one number. One, three, five, seven, nine, and ten. Okay, yeah. so 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 10. This is your A prime. What's your B? B is equals to 1, 4, 9. So union basically, like union uh, means like unity like that. Okay, unity. Everyone all unite together. Uh, so when everyone unite together means you include everyone together lah. Uh, you don't you don't leave anyone out. So how do we write A prime uh, union B? You just write whatever elements, but you don't need to repeat. Okay, don't need to repeat the same elements. So if you see in both of it, there's one, three, four, five, seven, nine, and ten. <clears throat> okay. And the last one, now what do they want us to do? They want us to draw a Venn diagram. Okay, so the Venn diagram is like your, okay, uh, you just draw like a rectangle. This is your entire universe. Okay, you're right here. Then you draw, because there are three sets, oops. So there are three sets. So we put three circles or three ovals, lah, okay, depending on how, how you want to express it. So we write this first one as set A, second one as set B, third one as set C. Okay, now we need to go back to what exactly is set A, set B, and set C. Eh? So I just copy this down.
Okay. We also have to consider what is not part of set A, set B, and set C. Okay. So how do we do, right? We just look at the numbers. Uh, we just, we, we look at one, uh, two sets at a time. Okay. Two sets at a time. Or we also can, okay, actually, there's no fixed method to, to do this. Lah. We just need to, to see, are there any common terms? No common terms? Or are there any terms that all three of it also have? So just now, we already defined some of it. We look at question C, right? A intersect B intersect C. There are actually no such number or no such element that all three of them have together. Okay. So where is this A intersect B intersect C? It's actually this part here, the middle. Okay, because all intersect together. So there's actually no such number. Lo. Okay, but let's look into, okay, we can get some clues from uh, question B also. B intersect C. Okay, B intersect C is over here. Okay, this part here. And we have the number one, right? The element one. So we write one there first. So whatever that we have, we, we can just write down first. What else do we see? Okay, nothing else, right? So we now just need to analyze from, from the sets itself. Okay, let's look at A and B. A and B got any common terms or not? Four, right? You see here? Four. Both of these are common. So we write this here, four. Okay, because there's an A intersect B. Why we don't write in the blue part? Because the blue part is the intersection between A, B, and C. Okay, any, any other uh, intersect between A and B? Don't have, right? Now let's look at um, A and C. Maybe I use another color then it's clearer. A and C. Got any common? One, two, or oh, two. Okay, you all see here, two and two. So what I write here, two. One, two, five, seven, the other one, six, eight. So no more other common terms already. Okay, so now what we do is we fill up the remainder um, of A. So six and eight, six, eight like this. Okay, we look at, now we look at this B here. 1, 4. Okay, already one, 1 and 4 was already written. Just now 1 because there's a... Okay, let me put it like this, uh, in the yellow color one, because that was what we found. Then 4 is with the, co the common, the intersection between A and B. So there's one more value that we haven't write, one more element, which is 9. So we just write 9 here. Okay, now we look into set C. 1 and 2, we already wrote down. There's only 5 and 7 left. Okay, so 5 and 7 left. This and this, so we write here 5 and 7. Okay, now you all look, right? These are all the numbers or all the elements that is part of set A, set B, and set C. Now, I want you all to think, what is not part of... What are not elements of set A, set B, and set C? So this is rather easy because you only got numbers 1 to 10. So you all check. Oh. Okay, I got 1. I got 2. Do I have 3? No, 3. So 3 is outside. Okay, you can write anywhere outside. Lah. It's like a, somewhere part of the universe. Okay, the universe is very, very big. So one, two, three, then we see got four inside, got five, got six, got seven, got eight, got nine. Then there's one more. Is that 10 inside the set A, B, and C? Don't have. So we write the 10 outside also. So three and 10 is actually defined as not part of A union B union C. Okay, not part of A union B union C. Okay, that's another 15 minutes. I will go through the next two. You all can rewatch this again. Huh? Okay, let's go to page 264. Using sets to solve problems. 
okay, using sets to solve problem. Okay, let's see what's given to us. Okay, do you still remember this symbol? Number of elements in set P is 35. Number of elements in set Q is 31. Number of elements in set R is 32. Okay, then they give us the next line. Number of elements in set P intersect with set Q is equals to 13. Number of elements that set P intersect with set R is 16. Number of elements in set Q intersect with set R is 7. Okay. Wow, so many, isn't it? The last one. Number of elements of set P intersect with set Q intersect with set R is equals to 4. And number of elements P union Q union R prime is equals to 6. Okay. Don't worry first, it might look very, very confusing. But let's break it down one step at a time. Okay, because there are so many information that's given to us right now. <coughs> okay, we know that set P, set Q, and set R. Okay, set P, set Q, and set R. So let's draw out. Okay, we want to uh, draw a Venn diagram. Huh? Okay, so the question is to ask, that they're asking is to draw a Venn diagram. Okay, so let's draw our universe first. Let's draw our universe. Oops. Okay, our universe has set P, set Q, and set R. So let's draw set P. Yep. Set Q. And set R. Okay, you want to draw it in in circle shape also totally fine, huh? Okay, so let's define this P, Q, and R. Okay, what do we know about P, Q, and R first? They're given to us over here. They say set number of elements, set P, set Q, and set R is equal to 4, which is this part here. So all of them intersect with each other is this value 4. So we write here 4. So whatever information that we have, right, we fill it up first. Okay, and another thing that we know, P union Q union R. That means what is not P union Q union R. P union Q union R, right, is here, here, and here. Which means it's out of the three sets, which is equals to 6. So we write here, 6. Okay, that's why the 6 is outside. Okay, so now let's, let's see. Uh, what, else can we, what else can we find? Okay, so now let's go to the second layer. P intersect Q equals to 13. P intersect Q, right, is this entire portion here. Right? This entire portion here. But you see, uh, P intersect Q already got a 4 here. So what we need to do is we need to minus 4 okay, to find this portion here. Okay, so how do we count this? N P intersect Q, this was given to us, is equal to 13. So how do we find that small portion there? It's 13 minus 4. Okay, that is equal to 9. So we write here, 9. Okay, you do the same for all the, the others also. We know that P intersect R is equal to 16. So 16 minus 4, okay, which you will get 12. 
which sec section is uh, 12, it will be over here. Okay, because that's the P in the sec R part, 12. Then one more last section. Uh, Q intersect R is equal to 7, so we 7 minus 4. Because the minus 4 uh, is because of that middle part there. The total of this entire thing is equal to 7, so 7 minus 4 is equal to 3. So 3, we use this color here. Okay, over here. 3. So now, right, I want you all to just double check. Uh, here, 9 plus 4, 13. 4 plus 3, 7. 12 plus 4, 16. Okay? So now we did the second layer already. This one, done. Okay, this one also done. Now, let's look. NP, number of elements in P, is this entire thing, ma, which has 35 terms. Okay? Which has 35 elements inside. So how do we find this remainder part? You just need to 35. Okay, we know that NP is equals to 35. So we just minus off everything that we have already counted. 35 minus 9 plus 12 plus 4. Okay, which you will get equals to 10. Okay. Not enough colors here. <laughs> okay, let's use this green color, which is 10 here. This is your green color. Integer. Yes. Not 2, 4. Where got 2, 4? I mean, uh, why is there only 1, 4 in minus? There's only it's... 1, 4 that appears there. Right? But 9, I thought. Like just now we use uh thirteen minus four and then twelve minus four. Uh huh. The four is is this four ma? There's only four that appears once here, unless there's a four and another four here. Then you minus four two times. Okay. Ah. Okay. Do the same thing. For Q, so N Q is equals to thirty one. So thirty one minus nine plus three plus four which is equals to 15. So 15 is over here. Okay, this one might look tedious uh, at, at the start. You all just need to practice it and you all will see that it's, it's actually not that hard. Okay, then same goes for NR. NR would be 32. So 32 minus 12 plus 3 plus 4. Okay, or you can write 32 minus 12 minus 3 minus 4. Like, it's the same thing, uh, which is equals to oops, oops, 13. Okay, let's uh, final color, which is... Uh, okay, put this red. 13. 13 over here. Okay. So now, we have our entire Venn diagram ready. Okay. They say draw a Venn diagram, and the next question is find n the number of elements in the universal set. So what you need to do is just add all of it together. Okay, just add all your numbers together. So you 10 plus 9 plus 15 plus 12 plus 4 plus 3 plus 13 plus 6. Your final answer you get is 72. Okay, so 72 will be your final answer. <coughs> okay, so this is how you draw a Venn diagram based on the information that they give you. They may give you elements, they may give you number of elements. You all need to know how to solve for both of it. Okay, just give me another five minutes. Let's go through the last example. Okay. Question, there are 29 students in a class, 22 study biology, which is represented by bracket B, 
19 study chemistry, 3 study neither biology or chemistry. How many students study both biology and chemistry? Okay, so we write down the information that we have first. NB is equals to 22. NC is equals to uh, 3. Hey, sorry, sorry. And C equals to 19. Okay. There are three students. Okay. Three students that don't study, that study neither of it. So we can write NB union C uh, prime, which is equals to 3. So they, they, they don't study one of it. But this bio and chem, uh, the students that study bio and chem, they don't study bio only and chemistry only. Uh. They might study, some of you here might, uh, actually here you all will all study bio and chem, right? But maybe they are, there's an option. Okay, maybe some of them, they only study bio because they don't like chem chemistry. Some of them, they study chemistry only. But some of them, they like both of it. So they study both of it. Okay. Uh, there are two methods uh, to do this. We'll just jump to method two because I don't want to confuse you all with so many methods. Okay, let's, do, let's use this algebra method. Okay, the algebra method, in my opinion, um, will be easier to do. So let's draw this out first so that we can see it clearer. So you all look at the bottom uh, using the algebra method. Okay. Oh, yeah. Where the shape do I come out? Okay. Okay, now we got biology and chemistry. Okay, we know that three of them, so whatever information that we have, we write down first, uh, three of them don't study neither um, chemistry or bio. So we write here three first. In fact, uh, the 29 students in the class, we can write it like this. Uh, your universal set is equals to 29. So that means everything inside this universe is equals to 29. Okay, for you to find the point of intersection, uh, which is this part here, this is using algebra, and I want you all to use this method because I feel it's much easier. You're right here as x. x means your intersection between set B and set C meaning the students that take both bio and chemistry. Okay, both bio and chemistry. So, what do we know? Okay, you have to write the X first. Huh? What do we know, right, about uh, the people, the students who take bio? Total students that study bio is 22 students, right? Okay, so what does it mean? This section here, we can represent it as 22 minus x. We know that the total students are, you all see uh, the, the equation. The 22 minus x are students who study bio, but not chemistry. Right? 22 minus x, so study bio, but not chemistry is equals to 22 minus x. Same goes for chemistry also. Those that study chemistry, but not bio. Okay, so you see how uh, we have 19 students, then we need to minus x, because the x, x is defined as, x is defined as number of students that study both bio and chemistry. Okay, so now we write here, also 19 minus x. Okay, now you've got all of it already. You just need to take the total universe, every element in the universal set, which is 29. And then, we know that the sum of all of this will be equals to 29. Okay, so how do we write? We can write it as 22 minus x, okay, which is this first part here. 22 minus x plus x 
plus 19 minus x. Okay, 19 minus x, which is this green part here. The sum of, uh, then, one more, one more, sorry, uh, heaven plus this, the people who don't study both bio and chem at all. Total would be 29. Okay, total would be 29. So you go and calculate it. Okay, you go and calculate it. Minus x plus x. This one will cancel off. Um, okay, then you plus it all together. Okay, you plus it all together on the left hand side. 22 plus 19 plus 3. You'll get 44. Then you're left with the x. Minus x equals to 29. Okay. Then you go and count what is x. x will be equals to 15. So this part here is actually 15. So 15 students studies both bio and chemistry. Okay? And so this is actually using the algebra method. Okay, using the algebra method. You just need to remember, include an X in the middle for the point of intersection. Alright, it's already time. You all need to go for your next class. Oh wait, you all actually have a break right now. Okay, so we will end this part 2 of sets and Venn diagram. Uh, I'll stop recording this video first.